Hello, in this video we'll be going over how to make a wall running system for our third person character. We'll make it so you can run on the left or the right side of a wall. Another video will be made on how to make a vertical wall running system, although that will happen at a later date. So to get started, if we head over to the third person character and go to the event graph, first thing we want to do is right click and look for event, begin play. And event begin play, we're going to drag in our character's movement. And from here we can look for set, plane, constraint enable, and we just want to check it. This will make it so we can constrain our player to one axis, which is the X, Y, and Z. Next, we're going to check to see if our player is on the left side of the wall or the right side of the wall. To do this, we'll right click again and look for event tick. And then we're going to drag here and have a branch. So we're only going to check to see if our player can run on a wall if he's in the air. To do that, we'll drag in our character movement again. And from here, we can look for is falling. And we can just connect this. And if this condition is true, we're then going to have a sequence. And the first thing we're going to do in our sequence is do a line trace. So if we look for line trace by channel. And the start of this line trace, we're going to right click and get our actor's location and plug this into the start. And for the end, we're going to right click again and look for get actor's right vector. And then from here, we can drag off and look for multiply vector by float. And you want to multiply it by 50. And then off our get actor location, we're going to drag and look for add vector and just connect this in here and plug this into the end. And then for the draw debug type, you want to make it full duration. And off here, you want to have a branch. And if this hits anything, that must mean we're on the right side of a wall. So I'll drag off here and I'll look for print string. And I'll just make it say right side of wall. And then if we just select all of this, and press Control C and then press Control V and plug this in here. So this is going to tell us if we're on the right side of the wall. This is going to tell us if we're on the left side of the wall. So to do this, instead of times this by 50, we'll times it by negative 50. And I'll do a line trace in the opposite direction. And then we'll make it print string left side of the wall. Now if I click compile and click play. If I go up to a wall and jump, we can see the line traces and it can see that I'm on the right side of the wall. If I turned around and jumped, it says that I'm on the left side of the wall. So now we can see if we're on the right or the left side of the wall. And then if we head back to the third person character, we're going to make it so that we're on the right side of the wall, we can start wall running on it. So to do this, we want to create a new variable and call it right side question mark. And we can just delete the print string. And if this is true, then we'll drag in this variable and just check it so it's true. And if this line trace doesn't hear anything and it's false, then we'll drag in this right side variable and just leave it unchecked. We're then going to create another variable and call it on right side. We're going to be using this variable later to tell us um, which direction we should jump if we're on the right side of the wall. And we just want to plug this in here and check it. And then before we start wall running, we're going to drag up here and have a branch. And just leave this unchecked and then right click and promote it to a variable and we'll call this is jumping off wall. So if our player is trying to jump off the wall, we're going to make it so he can't wall run. However, if our player is not trying to jump off the wall, we'll make it so he wall runs. When our player is warning, we want him to be facing the correct direction. So for false, we're going to look for set, actor, rotation. And we'll set it so he's facing the correct direction by dragging off the R hit result and looking for break hit result. Just select this little arrow icon. And from here, we want to drag off normal and look for rotation from X vector and just right click here and look for split structure. And then we're gonna drag off the Z value and look for plus float and make this a value of 90. And then if we head over to the set actor rotation, we also wanna split the structure of this and just connect this in the Z value. This will just make it so our player is facing the correct direction when he's wall running. Then when our player is wall running, we want to right click and get our actor's forward vector. And then from here, we want to drag off and for multiply vector by float and I found a value of 500 works and then if we drag in our character movement and from here we can look for set velocity and just right click and for split structure and we'll also split the structure up here and just plug this into the X and Y and just connect this here so when our player is wall running it will make it so he moves forward in the direction he's facing and then when my player is wall running, we're also 
drag of here and it will set gravity scale. And you'll just want to set the gravity scale to be a value of zero so my player can't fall off the wall. And then for character movement, we want to look for set plane normal. And then in the z axis, you just want this to have a value of one. This will just make it so my player is locked in the z axis. And then we just want to connect this. So this is how wall running is going to be when we try and wall run on the right side of the wall. So if I just click play and I run on the right side of the wall, we can see my character is moving along the right side of the wall. Next, we're going to do the exact same thing for when we're running on the left side of the wall. So I'm just going to select this and move it a bit down. Whoops. So we can just copy a load of this. So I'm just going to select everything, press Control C and paste it around here. So I'll just delete this print string and instead of having this right side variable, we're just going to delete it and delete this. I'm going to create a new variable and call it left side and just drag this here. When this is true, we'll just check it and make it checked. And when this is false, we'll just uncheck it and leave it unchecked and just connect this. And for the on right side, you just want to leave this unchecked when we're on the left side of the wall. And then I'm going to drag off our hit result and look for a break hit result. Click here and plug this in here. And this time we want to add it by minus 90. So this will make it so we're facing the correct direction when we're running on the left side of the wall. So now we should be able to wall run on the left side of the wall. So if I click play and I try wall running on the left side of the wall, I can wall run on it. So to make it so that when my player is running on the right side of the wall, he's not trying to run on the left side of the wall, off the sequence here, we want to have a branch. And the condition of this branch is going to be the left side. And we'll just plug this in here. And if this is false, then we'll make it so we can try and wall run on the right side of the wall. We'll just break the link to true. And we'll do the exact same thing for here. So off this sequence, I'm going to have a branch. And the condition of it is going to be right side. I'll just connect this here and plug false into here and break the link. So now my player can wall run on the right and the left side. We're now going to set it up so our player can jump off the wall. So to do this, we're going to right click and for add custom event and I'll just call this off wall. So this is what's going to happen when my player is off the wall. And when that happens, we'll drag in our character movement and set the gravity scale to be back at a value of 1 and we will set the plane constraint normal to be 0 in all the axis so he's not restricted to one plane and just connect this here. We'll just add this custom event here so when my player is not on the right side of the wall he'll be off the wall and we'll set it so he goes back to his normal gravity and plane constraint and we'll also add it here. Now I'm going to set up what happens when my player tries to jump off the wall. So to set that up, if we head over to where our player's jump nodes are, I'm just going to select everything and move it back as we're going to need a bit of space. I'll just delete this and then when my player presses the jump button, if he is on the wall, we'll have a branch and we'll check to see if he's on the left or the right side of the wall. So I'll get my left side and I'll get my right side and I'll drag off here and look for all boolean and plug this in here and this in here. If my player is not on the right or the left side of the wall, then he can just do his normal jump. So I'll just plug this into false. However, if my player is on the right or the left side of the wall, then we're going to launch my character. So I'll drag off true and look for launch character. And where we're going to launch our character is going to depend if he's on the right or the left side of the wall. So earlier we made this variable called on right side. So using this, we'll be able to tell us which direction we should launch our character. So I'm going to drag that variable in, get on right side and drag off here and look for select. And we want to scroll down and look for this select. And if this variable is true, character is running on the right side of the wall. And we'll right click, get our actor's right vector. And I'll drag off here and look for multiply, vector by float. And we want to multiply this by a value of around minus just make sure it's a negative number and i found a value of minus 450 works well and just plug this into true 
and if this is false, then I'm just going to select everything, press Ctrl C, press Ctrl V, and this time we'll make sure it's a positive number. So I'll make it positive 450 and plug this into false. And then we have a normal our character. We just want to right click here and look for split structure, and right click here and look for split structure, and just connect it in the X and the Y. And to make it so my character moves a bit up when he's jumping from wall to wall, I found a launch velocity in the Z axis or around 450 works well as well. I just want to click this Z override. And then, so the game knows that my player is trying to jump off the wall, we're going to drag in our is jumping off the wall variable and set it to be true. And just plug this in here. And this in here. And then I'm going to have a delay of 0.2 seconds and we'll just uncheck the is jumping off the wall variable so the game knows that we're not jumping on the wall. We've created quite a lot of blueprints, so I'm just going to comment everything. So I'll just press C and call this jump. And then I'm also going to just move this here. And we just comment this run on left side of the wall. And I'll just move this down. And I will comment this and call this run on right side of the wall and I'll just comment this and call this off wall conditions. I'm just commenting everything as we create quite a lot of blueprints and it can be a bit messy. So now if I just click play and I go to some walls I set up earlier, go on the wall, I'm jumping on it, I'm warning it, press the spacebar, I jump in the opposite direction and I press spacebar, I jump off the wall and I can go in the opposite direction. So I'm on the left side of the wall, jump, on the right side of the wall, and I can just jump off the walls. So next we're going to set this up with some animations. If we head over to the mannequin folder and go to animations, in the description I'm going to leave a link where you can download some animations for the character running on the left and the right side of the wall. We'll just drag them into Unreal, and for the skeleton you want to select the view for mannequin and just click import all. And then we just double click and expand Unreal. Then if we head over to the third person animation blueprint, and just make click the default button and go here. We're going to drag in our wall run left and our wall run right. And from our jump loop, we're just going to drag and connect from here. And we'll drag and connect from here. And we'll do the same with the wall run left. And in order to enter the wall run right animation, we'll double click, go inside here, and right click, permanently grab one call. Call it wall running right side and then exit here. And then to leave this transition, we'll double click, go in here, drag in our wall running right side, drag off here and look for not Boolean, and just connect this here. And we'll do the same thing for our wall on left side to enter it. We'll create a new variable, promote a variable, and call it wall running left side. I probably named these a bit too long, that name's really long. And then to enter, to leave this transition, we'll drag in our wall running left side and look for not boolean and just connect this here. And then so that my character can do these animations, we need to head over to the event graph. And from the try get polynomial, we're going to drag up here and look for cast to our third person character, so that guy. And then we'll just click here and then right click here and look for convert to pure cast. And as the third person character, we can check when he's on the right side of the wall. So I look for get right side. And we can also check to see if he's on the left side. So I'll drag a pin up for get left side. And if he's on the right side of the wall, then we're going to just drag in our right side variable and connect it here. And we'll do the same for our left. So I'll drag in my warning left side, set it, and just connect it here. And plug this in here. And then I'll hit compile and click play and I run across some walls and start to do his wall running animation and there's one more thing if I click play with this system you'll be able to run on any surface you may want it so that the player can't run on certain wall surfaces to make that happen if we head back to the third person character and go to the line trace by channel we can make it ignore certain static meshes so if we just drag off axis to ignore and look for tag and look for get all actors with tag. And if I make something have a tag such as not a wall and just 
connect this in here and plug this in here this will make it so that any actor which has this tag not a wall my player won't be able to run it so if i just close this sorry if i compile first and then close this and select this wall and then in the details look for tag and go actor add tag and make it have the tag not a wall and click play my player won't be able to wall run on the right side of this so if he clicks play he can't wall run it if i just delete this and then click play and i tried wall running on it i'm able to wall run on it and that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed if you did like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye